All right, hello everyone, this is John, and in this video, I just want to quickly demonstrate how to recode multiple string variables into numeric variables using the automatic recode option in SPSS. As you can see here, there is uh, five variables or five questions, all containing string values. As you can see, they contain values that range from A, B, C, and D, but we don't really want these uh, letters or string values within the data. We want actual numerical values instead. So I'll quickly demonstrate what I'm going to do here. I'm going to change all the A's to 1's, B's to 2's, C's to 3's, and D's to 4's. But there's also two other variables in this data set, uh, question 3 and question 5, which will be reverse scored. So instead of A equaling 1, we'll do just the opposite, A equals 4, B equals 3, C equals 2, D equals 1, etc. So I'll demonstrate how to do this, and you can do this for multiple variables, and it's very time efficient. Go to transform, automatic recode, and you're going to include all the variables that will require the same type of recoding into uh, the variable table right here, or the variable bo box. So we'll include question one, question two, and question four. They're all going to require the same kind of uh, recoding, so we can do them all together. Question three and question five we'll do separately. So with each variable that you include, you have to create a new variable name. So we'll call this question one recoded, add new variable. And here it says uh, lowest value, recode starting from lowest value. That pretty much is saying that A is going to be coded as one, B is going to be coded as two, C is three, D is four. So that's good. We like that. Now the next one, let's continue recoding these really quickly. Question two, recoded and then question four recoded. Okay, adding those. And now here there's an option to treat blank string variables as user missing. As you could see, just looking above uh, the box here, under question two, it looks like subject six actually did miss two questions. So every time we do this recoding, you want to include this so it accounts for user missing variables. If you do not include this, it's going to assign a value to these missing spots and that will skew your results as I'll demonstrate shortly. So here we go. It has recoded these variables into new variables. A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4. We can minimize this window and here they are. Question 1 has been recoded. Question two has been recoded and question four has been recoded. And here you can see for question two, that missing value that was located here has now been coded as five. But this five is an arbitrary number. It is not actually being included as a value as I'll demonstrate shortly. But let's now uh, reverse uh, code these other two questions and then I'll continue from there. Okay, so we got those ones. We can kick those out. Now let's include the reverse score and reverse score. So of course we have to recode these. I'll just call it question three, recoded. Um, so originally we had it at lowest value, but for items that are reverse scored, you can click highest value now. And that's pretty much gonna do the opposite. Instead of assigning A to one or B to two, it's gonna assign A to four and B to three, etc. So let's add that one. And then question five, recoded. Add that one as well. And of course, we have to treat blank string variables as user missing, which we're doing because in course in question five, we have that missing value. Click OK. And here they are. So we have for question three, A is a value of four, B is a value of three, and C is a value of two. That's exactly what we want. And then now for question five, we have A is uh, four, B is three, etc. And then for any missing values, we have it as a value of five, but it's really an arbitrary number and it doesn't really mean much at all. And I'll demonstrate that just now. Okay, so here's these missing values for these two questions. It's a five, it looks like it would be contributing to the data set, but it actually is not. And I'll show what happens if you did not recode including this. So if I go back to transform, automatic recode, 
we're going to get rid of 3 because it doesn't have any missing values. But for question 5, it does have a missing value. So let's just call 555, five, five, add new. But we're going to take away this value here. I'm going to demonstrate why. Click OK. So we have now 5, but it's not being treated as a missing value. So in this case, it's actually being assigned a value of 5. Because what you need to know with string variables, anywhere where there's a missing uh, value, it's still being treated as a value. So for example, if I go to analyze descriptives, let's compare the two recoded questions. We'll compare question 5 and question 555. They're exactly the same question recoded, but one I did not select the missing value. Let's look at the mean to see what happens. And here we are. Question 5, where I selected the user missing value, has a mean of 2.67. But in question 555, the value is 2.90. So in this case, if you did not select uh, missing values, that missing value option, it's going to actually include it as a value, which will then later skew any results if you're not aware of this uh, missingness not being accounted for. And part of the reason I wanted to show that is because when dealing with string variables, we see these missing values here and assume that it's just a missing value, but it's not treated that way in SPSS. It is still treated as a value. So for example, if I go to frequencies and do question two, or even uh, let's do question five as well, because they both have missing values. Here it's showing the landscape. It's showing that there's two for A, two for B, one for C, and two, uh, four for D but we still have that one missing value and it's and it's not being assigned any clear value that we can see here but when we look at the table up above it's technically not missing it's actually being totally valid and included and all 10 values are being accounted for so that's why especially when you're doing uh, automatic recoding to be very careful for that make sure to select whether you want the values to start from low to high or high to low but you always select that treat the blank string values as user missing because if you're not careful with this, it can really become a problem later on when you start actually performing actual analysis on the data set. Uh, thank you for watching. If there's any other things you would recommend uh, proceeding with doing automatic recoding, please let me know. Always looking for uh, other ways of improving these step-by-step uh, -step processes. Thank you very much.